Hello everyone, my name is Lancel90 and welcome back to Let's Play... I almost said Cataclysm to 88. No, it's uh, Major Minor, Chapter 2. As soon as we enter, a feeling of deja vu hits me like a ton of bricks. I feel like I've been to this place before. I can't put my finger on it. Take a few steps forward. I look, look around a tiny bit and scan my surroundings. It definitely seems busy. I notice a waitress stumble around as she delivers drinks. I see a man at a desk shuffling papers, and then I see... Oh, jeez, that's extremely flamboyant. I'm sorry. Howdy there, what brings you in? I blink a couple of times, not sure what to say. The young rabbit tilts his head and looks behind me. Oh, you guys again. I Can you at least buy some drinks this time? We have to make a living, you know. Hey, PB. Long time no see, buddy. I'm not your buddy. Really gonna break my heart? Just like that? Ouch. How about you buy some drinks? Then we'll talk. We have an establishment to run here. I confess, Indemine and myself do like to come here. We can just blend into the crowd and become anonymous. Of course, we often don't have coin to purchase drinks. Our lives are far from luxurious, so we loiter. His name is PB, just like two letters. That has to stand for some... They don't ask me what my name stands for. It stands for nothing. Nothing at all. Haha, <laughs> I'll find out one day I know it. What a ferocious little guy. He runs this place on his own. Hey, new guy. Stares me in the eyes with much less piercing, much less piercing than into mine's gaze for sure. Allow me to welcome you to the Wayfarer's Tavern, my humble abode. And girl, I hate being formal. It's my bar, okay? I run this place. Is he old enough to drink alcohol? <laughs> what are the laws on Terra? We opened up about six or seven years ago, and since then we've become one of the most popular wandering holes on Terra. We also double as an immigration office. I guess we thought that thought that after a long journey here, a drink would be in order. A man after my own heart. I'll kill you, Connor. Oh, this little hothead. I'm not little. PB starts fuming, but thankfully before Conrad can respond, someone stops in front of him. Probably for the best. You can sure run that mouth. That one I'm not sure is male or female. Oh, hey, Fidget. Probably female. Then. With a name like that, but that's only a guess. What is it now? The other rabbit, who appears to be named Fidget, shuffles awkwardly. Oh, yeah. No. There's our answer. He appears both nervous and shy. Um, I wanted to ask if Mom would be coming back today. I wanted to see her again. No, Fidget. Not today, brother. Oh, okay. Besides, can't you see I'm with company here? It's not nice to intrude. I said, hey. Put his hand out to shake mine, but he quickly blushes and pulls it away, and then he runs off. Interesting. Well, sorry about that. That's my brother Fidget. He helps out as much as he can, but he's pretty shy. He says it's his dream to become a good at customer service and make our mom proud. So he studies under the barbate Trish. He leans forward to whisper in my ear. But to be honest, neither of them are really good at it. They do it for free. He googles before pulling back. Practice makes perfect, though, right? Follow me, you three. We need to sit down and talk. <coughs> How are all three of us, or all four of us, going to talk if, uh... Oh, we're at chapter 3. I should probably save it. <laughs> if I would have known that this was chapter 3, I would have continued on the last episode. You know what? I can actually just stick it on the other episode. I can add it together. But when was the last time it saved? I don't think it was too long ago. So let's continue a little bit further. PB doesn't sit down with us. Instead, he hovers over the table looking down. So first, we need to talk about repairs. Slams his paws down on the table. The sound echoes through the tavern and people stare. Repairs? What are you talking about? Repairs for the damages you two tossed, caused last time you were here. Tavern brawls aren't clean, you know. I threw a poor guy across the room. You need to pay for the broken glassware and that huge dent in the wall. Points across the tavern. Sure enough, there's a huge dent in the fragile wall. That wasn't us. Of course it was. I saw you two throw him over with my own eyes. His body caused the dent. Oh no, you're not talking your way out. Not like the last ten times. Cause damages here often? I'm starting to question these two men. It's just something expected on our work. I don't care what you have to say, you're paying up now. But we don't have the money. How convenient. Really, I mean it. Well then, I guess I'll add on interest. The cost of damages plus triple. That's not fair, PB. Neither is breaking my house. An important mission this time. We'll be compensated greatly. Please just give us some more time. Are you always on an important mission? Well, yeah, but none have been as important as this. 
been hired by the king himself. Is that so? It really is. He sits down across from the three of us. Alright, start talking. Well, it's kind of confidential. Confidential is non-existent. You're obviously just buying time. The king would never work with assassins. PB sharply inhales as he's about to yell. But Endemon quickly cuts him off. Is he scared? No, please. No, ta no need to call him here. Fine, you win, I'll tell you, but you'll have to promise you'll wait. Depends on how good your story is, I suppose. A few moments pass, and then Endemon stares at me. Savior, feel free to wander around the place while I give PB a small recap of our situation. I'm sure you don't need to hear it again. If that much was true, there were a certain number of things that started to sound like a broken record in my head. Couldn't help but notice PB's ears perk up slightly at the mention of the word Savior. I silly stand, stand up and start to walk away. I can hear the words Earth, Velquiz, and Savior being said again before I'm out of earshot. As I approach the center of the tavern on my own, I know many eyes fall off fall upon me. Normally, the experience would have plagued me with anxiety. However, something about this place feels different. I notice them sif sip beverages as they stare. They talk amongst themselves as they look in my direction. can't make out what they're saying in all their words, but I sense a hit of sorrow or remorse. Was I truly the savior of all these people? What would I do to help them exactly? I understood that my power thinks to what my power was thanks to the quick explanation from the man in the Ark. No, he didn't, he didn't really explain it unless we loaded the other the file over and over and kept answering it, but that's a little silly. However, as much as I thought about it, I wasn't quite sure I could use this power to save the troubled world. There had to be something more to this power, perhaps something to, more to the situation. I feel like I haven't been told everything. Maybe Indemayan and Conrad weren't told everything. Something so secret that I even left and right hands of the king know what's going on? Cool. I scan the bar one final time as I make contact, eye contact with each individual they turn away in a panic. Like a child who was caught doing something wrong. The forlorn look in their eyes as they frantically turn away fills me with determination. What, are we playing Undertale now? Determination to save this world and bring them to faces of happiness. This is the February... This month's... Uh, chapter update, so... Undertale has been out... Reached quite a bit of pop popularity, so I'm sure that's a reference to Undertale. <laughs> we'll know for sure if it lets us save the game at this point. Once I speak to the king, I'm assuming the man in the ark will come back to us to discuss our next step. I guess the only thing I can do for now is wait. I spot Fidget standing at the bar with the barmaid. Perhaps the barmaid, I haven't seen any others, so I decided to approach him for the time being. Best stick with familiar faces for now. No fidget, you have to do it in a soft, circular motion, so otherwise you'll risk scratching the glass, and that's not okay. Sorry, Trish. I was just doing it the way PB taught me. Hey, another female. I think, hopefully. <laughs> Honest. That may be, but you seem to be forgetting who the head barmaid here is at the tavern. You are, indeed. So let PB teach you PB things. I'll teach you barmaid things. Got it? Got it. It just smiles widely and starts cleaning glassware. Once I'm close enough, I introduce myself formally. Fidget puts out puts out his hand for a moment and retracts it right away, just like last time. Is he afraid of me or something? Trish looks at him, then looks at me. She immediately puts her hand out to shake my hand as if to cover up what Fidget what just did. Unfortunately, she forgets that she was holding a large glass, dropping it in an attempt to free her hand and shake mine. It shatters against the floor quite loudly. Hey, I'm Trish, Master Barmaid here at the Wayfarer's Tavern. I'm also in the midst of teaching Fidget my trade. Master Barmaid, that was a self-proclamation for sure. Something tells me this is going to end horribly. Kind of like Rook teaching me... Rook teaching Jade humor. So cleaning up to the shattered glass, she just takes a few steps to the side. Wow. I'm teaching Fizzit to be the best he can be. So when his mother comes back, he can make her super proud. Going to be the best barmaid ever. When mom comes back, she won't recognize me. I think he means bartender. Barmaid is the female nomenclature. And comes back, where exactly did their mother go? Trish reaches out and pets the top of his head. She perks up and looks incredibly happy about this. Both of them seem to have forgotten about the bed of broken glass that lay on the floor beneath them. I hope she comes back soon. I've been waiting a really long time. Tristan lets out a nervous giggle and turns her head towards me. She takes another glass and starts cleaning it as she speaks. So I'm guessing his mom's probably dead, or missing at least. 
So it brings you here. Most people would say that being tied to Indomin and Conrad means trouble. I laugh nervously as well for a bit of a different reason entirely. They quickly explained that they are taking me to meet the king, and we just had to stop here to file my papers and check their mail. Wow, you're going to meet Queen Velquez? I am so jealous. Can I come with you? I haven't seen him in forever. Maybe they'll know where Mom is. Fidget, calm down. It's very rude to invite yourself over into other people's business. Apologize to your Osworn. Sorry, your Osworn. Just got excited because I know that our king is smart and might be able to help find Mom. I feel bad. If Tristan didn't barge in, I probably would have said yes. He seemed really dedicated to the cause of finding his mother. I respect that. I didn't find it rude that he asked. If the situations were reversed, I would have asked too. Well, I see that checking for mail also involves a lengthy chat with PB. She tilts her head towards the direction I came from. I see PB flailing his arms and speaking loudly as if he's lecturing Conrad and Andemon for the wrongdoing. He gets like that often. He's known to fly off at the handle of the slightest provocation. Fidget doesn't, however. I notice that Andemon and Conrad are waving me over. I cut the conversation with Trish and Fidget short. Promising them that we'll continue later. I guess I'm not going to connect this. I'm not sure how I'm, <laughs> I'm going to cut these two videos together. Uh, too many questions for them not to come back to this. Like where PG, PB and Fidget's mother is, for example. I also wanted to know, learn more about the tower and the owners as well. I also believe it would be good to learn things from an unbiased source. I don't believe Trish or Fidget know I'm the savior. They treat me just like anyone else that walked in here. I know for a fact I couldn't say the same about Indemon and Conrad. Oh, uh, I hold down space there and it just skipped through. Yeah, to some things in the pile of broken grass, I guess. I walk back towards Indemon and Conrad and PB, but out of the corner of my eye I see someone staring. Upon seeing me en route to the assassins, they immediately leave the post of their chair and intercept me like they don't want me to get there. Not only I wouldn't have been surprised, but I'm used to this by now. It seems that even on Terra, I hope people stopping me or bumping into me at all times. Luckily, I've gained the ability to sense this. I'm able to stop in my track so I don't bump into him. I'm glad I did, because first off, he's massive. Second off, he's massive. I don't know what this man would do to me if I smashed into him. You. He stares down at me. Look on his face and tight. Inciting me with an almost primal fear. Urge to run rising. Your friends talk loudly, they want to hide your role as savior. But the volume in their voices contradicts this desire. His voice is very deep, his accent is quite thick as well. He has a voice that I would have always pictured belonging to a band of wandering tribesmen. <laughs> I, would, I would advise that you tell them to keep their mouths shut. Otherwise, it would could get you into trouble easily avoided. He grips his axe as if to threaten me. If at a time like that comes, please feel free to hire my services. Most of my time is spent here watching over the rabbits, so you know where to find me. Doesn't need to specify who he means. Is he the guardian of PB and Fidget? This must be who PB was about to call for earlier, before Inman cut him off out of fear. <laughs> Don't blame him if that was the case. Oh, sorry for not introducing myself, I feel a little about a place over here. That's better. You can call me righty. <laughs> Fourth wall breaking. I run the Mercenaries Guild. He extends his arm to shake mine. I do so in turn. He has a firm grip and his hand is large enough to wrap around mine almost twice. Well, that's assuming a lot. How do you know I'm not like a horse anthrop? Then ask me what my species is. <laughs> that's nice to, to actually shake a hand today. I found it odd that Fidget kept backing out. I'm known here as a protector. In exchange for money, ensure the safety of others and help them along their path. From what I overheard, your path seems to be an arduous one. It may even be more so if your companions keep talking. If the wrong people caught wind of your identity, there would be no shortage of those who want to hold you for ransom. And as I am surely not the only one who overheard their secret discussion with PB, we must assume that the others are planning this now. Word spreads fast on Terra, and it's safe to assume the target will fall upon you soon. That in, I have a proposition for you. Please meet me in the wine cellar at your earliest convenience. Come on. Come alone. Without another word, he walks off. His large steps shake the floor below me until he's far enough away. My heart beats fast. I'm not exaggerating when I say I was the most intimidating man I've ever met. He seems alright, though. I continue my walk over to Indomin, Conrad, and PB. All the while, I'm prepared for someone to interrupt me, but it doesn't happen. Isn't that how it usually is, though? 
you're expecting something, it never happens. Life has a way of catching you off guard. So, I see you met Righty. Always eager to sell his services, it seems. At least he's capable of making money. Phoebe glares at Indem and Conrad. Hey, you said you'd be okay with waiting. Unless you wanted to, to con a story out of us or something. That's not cool, PB. Ah, uh, yes, the savior they called you. I guarantee for the renovations here. I hope for your sake that what they told me is true. If you don't get that hole in the wall fixed, I'll get righty involved. Hey, now, there's no need for that. I guess we'll see now, won't we? PB trots off. He appears to walk towards Triss and Fidget. I wouldn't be surprised if he yells at them next for the broken glass carpet. So that was Righty. He was he was in the running to be a third member of our guild way back when. Of course it didn't work out. He branched off to form his own yet. I guess you could say he's our rival. He steals a lot of our business, you know, with us having to kill someone and him having to protect said person. We clash lots, that's why Hillquiz has been giving us work not related to killing, such as the player scheme. And you. I'm not sure why he wants to see you. He probably wants to con his way into this endeavor because it's lucrative. Must admit though that the job of me and Indy in protecting you is definitely encroaching on his territory. Perhaps he wants to convince you to take him, go with him instead, so he can take the earnings promised to us by Volquez. Be wary of what he tells you, giving us less for gold. I have no reason to believe he would resort to a subterfuge. Though he's a protector, there are many in his ranks that perform espionage and manipulations. Just be wary, Savior. As we have nothing to hide, please go hear him out. We'll be waiting here for your return. I'll check the mail. I'll be here twiddling my thumbs. Good luck, Eurus Oh, uh, if he wants to come along with us, make it clear that we're not splitting the money that Volkos is giving us for this. It will not make things cool between us. He is the one who ran away when we accepted him with open arms. I nod. I wasn't aware that the three had a history like this. However, now... <clears throat> Now some of their past actions and words made more sense to me. What was their story? It seemed like everyone here is related in some way. Maybe Terra is a small world after all. I started to walk in the same direction as the bear. I hoped that his the seller he spoke of would be easy enough to find. No one gave me any direction. After a few moments I see a large wooden door. There appears to be a cartoon drawing of a, wall, of a bottle of wine on it. It has a happy face, arms, and legs. When I get closer I notice that underneath the drawing it reads... I drew this cute wine bottle. Here's my best friend. He's my best friend. Fidget. How cute. Hope he doesn't drink this stuff, though. The dr in the drawing, the bottle of wine is empty. Perhaps I'll compliment Fidget on his masterpiece later. But for now, I was on a mission. I slowly open the wine cellar door and begin my descent. Hey, a save point. So, we'll end this episode here. It's getting late. I wasn't expecting episode or chapter 2 to run into 3 or like that. Although I should have, considering how chapter 1 kind of led into chapter 2. I prefer a harder harder cut, so I know when to do it. It should save right when the right when the screen pops up for the next chapter. But, uh, I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, chapter 2 and chapter 3 have been a lot better at writing-wise than chapter uh, 1 was. I'm having more fun with it. And I uh, hope you all have a good day.